All right. Have you checked out the new Sound Toys Super Plate Reverb plugin? Because it's freaking amazing, honestly. It's my favorite reverb plugin to come out for ages. I've been a big Valhalla DSP kind of reverb guy for ages, and their stuff's still great. But this new Super Plate is finding its way on all of my mixes, and it has one little feature that is kind of hidden away and it's the coolest thing. It is the best part of this plugin. I think every reverb plugin should have this going forward and I'm in love with it and I want to show you how to use it. All right, jumping into the session, I've loaded up a song by an artist named Trace Spencer. It's killer, go check him out. And uh, I've got a great sounding vocal here. I'm just gonna bypass our effects and just listen to his vocal. Whoa, I went back to your place, but you told me. All right, now let's throw on Super Plate. Epic sounding plate, They're, all of these modes sound good. Whoa, I went back to you. I like that, this Otacon's been another favorite of mine. Whoa. And then this classic 240 is also beautiful. Whoa, oh, oh, I went back to your place. Now, you may have noticed that things sounded a little bit different than you're probably used to when you just slap a reverb on a vocal. And you may have also saw that there was something going on. Just have a look while we listen to it here and pay attention to what's going on around this decay knob. Whoa. And that sounds a little wet. I've intentionally left that <laughs> ultra wet so you can hear what's going on really closely. But what's happening is it's almost like somebody is throttling that reverb decay time and cleaning it up when we need it clean and then letting it breathe when there's space for it. And that is exactly what's happening. That's the really cool thing I want to show you. Check this out. Go into your plugin, click on tweak. And now it brings out this whole new, another window. There's a bunch of stuff here. You got a whole EQ section, which is really nice for them to just build that in. And it does respond to these filters, by the way, if you were wondering, which is also cool. You got width if you want to mono it out or keep it wide. You can lean it one way or another if you wanted to for whatever reason. But the big thing, ah, there's also modulation worth mentioning. But the big thing is that there's this auto decay center. Uh, center. I don't know what I meant by that. <laughs> but what you can do, you can tell it, I want you to change the decay time to X when a certain threshold is being hit. So right now I've got the target decay set down to negative five. I'm going to lean in because I need to check that that actually says negative five. It does. It's really small. <laughs> I wish I could make that bigger actually. But anyways, you've also got a recovery, which is going to be the amount of time it takes to get back to its originally assigned value, which is set up here in your original decay knob. And then the threshold, which is of course going to be how much volume it's looking for to uh, engage this auto decay feature. So let's have a listen here. I'll solo it out again. I remember the last time I had a talk with you. You can say what you want with just a look in your eyes. So as you can hear, it's actually shortening the reverb decay time while he's singing. And then once he stops singing and that threshold is no longer met, it then opens back up to your originally assigned decay time, letting that reverb blossom and bloom and get all magical in those spaces. So we're effectively able to keep it clean and more intelligible uh, while they're singing and then filling the gaps in between, which is mighty cool. Now, just to experiment, I'm going to extend the recovery time and we're going to hear what happens in those gaps. I remember the last time I had a talk with you. You can say what you want with just a look in your eyes. So it doesn't jump back as immediately. It's kind of smoother. It's probably wise to kind of throttle that a little bit. Not so quick. Let's try... Backing this off around here. And fun little tip, most Sound Toys plugins do this. If you click on the title of whatever parameter you're adjusting, it'll actually give you a value, which is nice when there's like kind of just this vague knob here. So if I click recovery, I'm gonna see that it is giving us 84 milliseconds to recover. All right, let's have a listen. I remember the last time I had a talk with you. You can say what you want with just a look in your eyes. That's doing a really good job. Okay, so obviously it's too wet. We can try that up a little bit. The longer decay time doesn't need to be that long. I mean, just, I want there to be an example though, so we'll keep it pretty long. Uh, I like that Stocktronics, I think, more. Um, 
pre-decay. I'm actually going to tighten that up because it's kind of doing, it, since it's not so long, don't need it so delayed. And the modulation, let's just turn that way down for now. And let's have a listen with this in the song. See what we think. I remember the last time I had a talk with you. That was tasteful. You can say what you want with just a look in your eyes. Really loved it there. Right at the end of eyes. You can say what you want. Turn it up a little bit for you. That's the, that's the magic stuff. This is kind of like auto mixing your reverb send for you. It's so handy. Again, I wish every reverb plugin would now implement that. Just moving forward. We need it. We want it. I love it. Thank you, Sound Toys. You've hit the a home run again. Um, if anybody wants that disclaimer thing, they didn't ask for this video. They don't sponsor me. They've never given me anything. I buy all their shit because it's the best. <laughs> Sound Toys rules. Okay. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to see another, do subscribe. And I got another little vocal video that's probably going to pop up right here. Or maybe here. But I'll see you next week. I remember the first time I called you, sweetheart. Whoa, oh.